from escaping the clutches of the terrifying Borg Queen to command the Enterprise, the greatest starship the Starfleet ever built. Captain Jean-Luc Picard always kept me on the edge of my seat, and now he's back for season 3 in his own spin-off series. Picard is set in the far-off future, to be more precise, in the year 2399. Not that far off, though we still aren't anywhere near building something like the Enterprise, but the series opens after the events of of the next generation, and now the captain has retired from Starfleet and has basically become a hermit. But as it goes in the Trek universe, he's drawn back into the thick of the plot because only he can save the day. He uncovers a dark Romulan conspiracy about a long lost alien civilization. Then he dies. Yep, I couldn't believe it either. He full on died. But we weren't done with him yet, and he gets his consciousness transferred into an android body. Now that season 3 is out, everyone has been wondering what's next for the swashbuckling captain. Although the directors have said that this was the final season, Patrick Stewart said that he thinks it's not over yet. He said that there are some doors that they didn't open, and some didn't close. Very cryptic message, Mr. Picard. What do you think he meant by that? Whatever it was, Alex Kurtzman, the showrunner, said that if the new season does well, they'll think about what to do next, but fans had bigger concerns on their plates. Like, why were there so many character cuts? But just hold on, because Terry Metalis offered up an explanation, and it makes perfect sense. The third season just abruptly ended the stories of some major characters, but he explained that since there were so many of the old cast returning, which was truly a sight to see, brought a tear to my eye, they wanted to focus on every character and give them their due respect. So, obviously, they ended up having to make some compromises. Can't have everything. Metallus said that it was actually just like real estate. To give each character the room they needed, they had to create space in the show. So, for that reason, they ended up having to reinvent and reimagine things a bit. And it isn't all bad. They only cut what was absolutely necessary. But think about everything we gained from it. The cast now includes Jonathan Frakes, Michael Dorn, Gates McFadden, Marina Sirtis, LeVar Burton, Brent Spiner, and, of course, Sir Patrick Stewart. It's the old New Generation gang back together again. Jerry Ryan is also returning as the Fearless Seven of Nine, and new cast members include Amanda Plummer, Mika Burton, and Ashley Sharp Chestnut. So, who got cut? Unfortunately, it was quite a few people. Dr. Agnes Girardi, who's played by Allison Pill, confirmed pretty early on that season 2 would be her last. This was actually heartbreaking news, because her performance as the terrifying Borg Queen was my favorite. So then, filming for season 3 began, and with such a huge cast member leaving the show, people grew more and more concerned about other actors in the show, and our worst fears soon came to be true. More and more more members were cut, and it was confirmed that Season 3 wouldn't have Evan Evagora, Isa Briones, and Santiago Cabrera. Isa Briones actually had more than one role on the show, so technically, she counts as two characters. She played Soji in Season 1, who was the catalyst that started the whole thing. Then, in the present timeline in Season 2, she played Cory. The Romulan fighter, Elnor, won't be returning, as Evan Evan Evagora, who captured the character so well. And Cabrera's Captain Cristobal Rios isn't going to be popping up either. But that's not the only thing fans have been low-key fuming at the directors for. Some of the changes to Picard make no sense. The old, stoic, and lovable Picard seemed to be lost when the new spin-off series started, and although Season 3 tried redeeming some of it back, the damage has been done, and the Captain just doesn't feel like himself anymore. It's because of some very fundamental changes. In the original Star Trek series, the captain's job was to be a completely neutral space explorer. He sometimes acted as a bridge between cultures, but always followed the prime directive. To not interfere with pre-warp societies in any way that would disrupt their natural development. So obviously, he had to be a very professional diplomat, always choosing peace, 
no matter the cost. He avoided conflicts and always respected the norms and traditions of the society they found themselves in. But that's not what it feels like anymore. The new Picard is the complete opposite. Maybe they wanted to show just how disillusioned he has become with Starfleet, but the darker version of the captain we all loved just didn't vibe with me, and more than 70% of the Trek community for that matter. Now he fights to impose his beliefs on others, and doesn't care what fights he's starting. So his open rebellion against one of his core foundations just makes no sense. His abandonment of Starfleet also seems unlikely. As we all know, after Romulus got destroyed in the 2009 Star Trek movie, Picard was reeling with the guilt of his actions. His role in the destruction of the planet was clear. He had refused to give aid on behalf of Starfleet, and that had led to androids being outlawed and hunted down. This is explained as the reason why he's left the service permanently and has become a cold and distant, resentful old man. That's very different from the Picard I remember from my childhood. He was always hopeful and looked forward to a brighter future, but the showrunners said they did this for a reason. They wanted to reflect the political happenings in the world right now, and the bleak outlook on a future that looks more and more dystopian by the minute comes from that. Even though that sounds deep and all, it made Picard lose his own identity, and the character has become unrecognizable, and fans have been quick to notice it. But do they actually hate Picard? Well, not exactly. The initial reviews were obviously very bad as we all saw, and the fandom was divided in two. People on social media gave out their reactions. Some said that they weren't mad at the show, but I just didn't care for it. They agreed the actors were doing the best they could with what they were given, and it was nice seeing everyone return, but the writing is just so bad. Other people were more positive though. They said that the haters were the loudest because they were giving their opinions the most. This toxic side of the fandom ends up representing the most, but it's not actually showing everyone's opinion. Others said that the problem with Picard was always going to be there, no matter what. The risk with reviving such a beloved classic is that people want something that looks like the past, and they just can't accept anything else. These people are actually the worst because they aren't letting the universe grow, and because of them, the entire fandom gets a bad reputation. So old school fans will find Picard challenging, but that's the entire point. The show is not nostalgic rehashing, and it's not just comfort viewing either, and overall, it has proven to be a really entertaining Star Trek reboot. It's more than just the same old actors coming on set again, wearing costumes and firing toy guns with cool special effects. They're actually doing something meaningful, probably more meaningful than they ever did in the original series. So Picard is the embodiment of the classic Star Trek saying, to boldly go, which is the most important direction to go in. Well, that was the real reason characters were cut in Season 3 of Star Trek Picard.